What's up everybody, it's Brandon here and I'm super excited today because I get to do something that I've been wanting to do for a really long time, uh, which is to kind of take you behind the scenes with me as I show you how I would go about editing a video. And uh, what was interesting is I was inside of this Facebook group and somebody had posted that they were wanting to uh, practice as a choir together um, before their Sunday service and they're trying to figure out a way to do that. And it was interesting because I was like, well, I've used Zoom before, like you should be able to use Zoom, like that shouldn't be an issue. Uh, but I guess the problem is there's latency based off of different people's internet connections. And so, you know, as people are singing, it's going to either sound like delayed to some people and the timing is going to be off, right? So I kept thinking about it because I really like how Zoom has done this like grid, right? It almost looks like... Uh, Oh, what was that show? The uh, the Brady Bunch, right? Where there's nine squares and you can see everyone singing. And, uh, or sorry, for that show, it was just everybody on the screen. But on this scenario, uh, how Zoom does it, right, is it shows all the little squares and it's just really cool. So I was like, huh, I wonder if there's a way to do that where I could basically make a video in advance, right? Pre-record -pre a video of a choir singing. And then could we take that and then um, be able to put that inside of our Sunday service? So that's what I wanted to do inside this video is show you how I would go about doing that. And so um, let's, uh, let's dive into this. So right now, I just wanted to show you, I have a folder on my computer that basically I've labeled one through nine, because those are going to be the nine blocks that I have on inside my screen. I've actually uh, seen recently on the Jimmy Fallon show where he will play with his band, right? And then he's in the center screen and every everyone else is around him. They're all singing the same song. They're having fun and it looks, it just looks good and it looks like it'd be super fun. And I wanted to break down how to basically be able to pull something like that off. And so inside this folder here, um, I had a friend, his name is Mark. And he sings in a choir. Here he is. And I, I reached out to him and I said, hey, could you get uh, a bunch of people together and we sing a song? Um, and that's what he did. And I'm super grateful for Mark for doing that. And so what I wanted to do is I went through already and I've already decided who is going to be in what quadrant, right? And so that's how I have top left, top middle, top right. Um, so anyway, what I wanted to do is I'm going to actually be using Final Cut Pro. Once I'm in here, let's just go ahead and rename this to I'm just going to go ahead and import my files now. I just select the files I want. I'm going to go ahead and click import. So now that I've got all of my files inside of Final Cut, what we're going to do is start laying them out. So I actually want to start with what I'll call the bass, which is the piano, right? Uh, or any other musical instrument I think should be the bass of what you do before you add vocals on top of that. So uh, let's go ahead and create like a new timeline here. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit, so I'll hit E and add it to the timeline. So from here, we'll just play it back. Okay, so one thing to note already is that um, one thing that I'm gonna end up doing as we go through this is paying attention to where my volume levels are because as we start stacking more people, we're gonna to have to bring everything down, right? And so uh, I actually like everything to be hitting at negative uh, three dB, which is if I hit play here, see how like this one is hitting just a little bit higher than I'd want. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drop that down by two dB. And now I'm hitting right where I want to be. Okay, so she plays this little prelude right here right and then right before the song actually starts which is about here so i'm just going to throw a marker in here roughly and then 
So here's how I'm going to do it, right? We just laid down the piano and now I'm going to start building on top of that. So if, if the piano is the bass, instead of putting down, let's say, uh, track number one, the top person, I'm going to actually leave that one to the very end. So it's the top of the list, the way that I'm going to keep stacking these up. You'll see in just a second. Um, one thing I want to make sure though, is when I click on these as that they're, that they're mono, not stereo tracks. I leave the piano in stereo, that's fine. So then what I want to do is I want to add a compressor. Now I normally have compressor presets that I've already made and then I normally just drag and drop, but I wanted to show you um, kind of my compressor presets and show you how you can do the exact same thing um, on your end as well. And these are what I found to be the best for me. And again, it might be totally different for you and your situation if you already have experience using this. But I usually like to make sure that I put my compressor ratio at 6.1. And that's pretty much it on this. And now if I hit play. Now, I all I did was I placed a rough marker of where the song kind of begins, right? And so we just need to make sure that we can line up each of the, the vocals to that. So I'm just going to zoom in here so we can kind of see more of what we're doing. I also like to typically cut off the beginning like breath or noise that sometimes people make with their mouths. Sometimes it takes a second to... It's also interesting how isolated voices sometimes are like, they don't sound they sound different but then when you put them all together it all comes together and it actually sounds good so um every time i listen to this i'm just kind of like uh, anyway some of the individual voices i haven't um anyway just on their own i haven't necessarily liked some of them but together then they like all work together so what more can he say than to you? So all I'm using on the keyboard is either the period or the comma key that will then slide my clips down. So that's all I'm trying to do is to figure out where the timing is on these clips. So I think right now that one sounds like it's in a good spot. It's a good timing. Um, I will say that we're probably going to end up having to rearrange a lot of the uh, vocals like once we start stacking these, like I said, so that the levels, because like right now, if you look at our levels, we're doing pretty good, but we might need to start dropping that down by like 2 dB. Cool. The other thing that I've noticed is when I apply a compressor, what I like about it is that it's bringing like the voice up, you know, but the challenge is it's also bringing the things that were quiet before up as well. So uh, like vocalists, when they breathe, you can definitely hear that, right? And so uh, you can see right here, I very much edit off of waveforms, but I can see right here, you know, she takes a breath right here. So I'm just going to drop this down to like, let's just say 25 dB. 
<laughs> What's nice is that there's still some ambient sound because I don't want it to cu to cut out completely. But let's hear all these other breaks that she has in between when she's uh, singing. <laughs> Again, I'm just using the range selection tool here. Um, it's really quick and easy to do. So you can kind of see the hear hear the difference. And again, I'm just kind of roughing these in, and I just don't want them to be distracting for the audience that's going to be listening to these. And again, it doesn't have to be precise, like exactly negative 25 dB. Like I said, some of these are 26, some are 23. It's just the goal is when I play it back to hear just more pleasant to not hear the breath, you know? Because again, when we apply that compressor, it definitely brings that out. Great. Okay. So that was our very first one that we just did. And um, I think the other thing is we should start um, placing them of where they're going to go, right? And so I think I said earlier, the piano is going to be our very first clip because we're actually going to start with her playing piano here. And then, but we don't want to have, like right now, this singer is like full screen. So if I click on this, we can actually scale it down. And again, mathematically, the way that I'm doing this, I'm just going to type in 33%. I've done this before, um, so I'm kind of familiar with the numbering. Um, you might, I'm going to, that'll create some like borders around each of the clips that I'm about to do. But if you don't like that, you can still adjust your sizing. Um, I just wanted to have the border, so that's why I'm doing this. Um, cool. So now that we've got her size down, let's, uh, let's get her position as well. And again, I'm just moving down the position tool here. What's cool about this is like, if you've done, if you do this once, right. And if you know how many people are going to be in your choir, then the nice thing is you can then just save out these values and then just manually type them in and it'll save you a ton of time going forward in the future. So this first one that I'm doing is going to take you some time to get set up. But like, like I said, once you've done this once, like you can keep doing it uh, repeatedly and it, the process goes so much faster. That looks good right there. So now let's go on to the next one. So we're going to come up here. Again, my keyboard shortcuts are not maybe yours, depending on what editing software you're using. So if you're using Final Cut Pro, then you can follow along. If not, then you can just ignore what I'm saying. But for those that are following along using Final Cut, that's why I want to make sure that you know uh, what I'm doing with my hands, because I'm not necessarily doing everything uh, inside this window. So I'm actually just going to copy what I did on hers, and I'm actually going to paste it onto his. And what's interesting is I can do position, I can do scale, I can do the compressor. I'm actually not going to do volume because where he takes breaths might not match up where she takes breaths. And so I don't want to I don't want to put that information on on down on there. So I'm going to go ahead and click paste. And then from here, I'm actually going to move him over into position. And it's nice because it all it automatically remembered my 33%. It knew that I was going to keep it on the bottom line. Everything's good to go there. Um, so there you have that. And now let's listen to him. And again, I'm just looking at waveforms. And I can kind of move quickly when I can just look at roughly where these are going to start lining up. OK, 
Okay, I'm getting close. So I'm again, I'm just listening back and I'm sometimes I'll move move the clip up or down the timeline depending on just the timing of this, right? So I don't want to have to have you sit through and listen to this that many times. Play it from the beginning. All right. Now, all I want you to do is to pay attention to where my levels are at, right? So we've got three things added now. So if we look at our... And again, I, you know, we might end up just dropping this one down. All right, so that's another one added, right? And so you can see how quickly this moves when we can start adding more of these. So let's just go ahead and add the next one. All right, so the reason I brought this clip in is because a lot of times if people are holding their phone horizontal, right, then they look all uniform, where she did hers vertical, and now I feel like we need to fix it so that everything will look good inside of all the squares, okay? And so what we ended up doing, right, is I brought it in, I noticed that because she filmed it vertically, like she had maybe a little bit too much headroom than what I would want. So all I did is I zoomed in on her clip. And so we just did 119%. And I think that that looks good. And I like the background. It's going to move with her as she moves. Again, it's not something that you have to do. Um, it's completely optional. But I just thought I'd show you like how you can fix something like this in case you run into the situation. So I'm just going to go up here and I'm going to hit, uh, I'm going to export this clip out. And then while that's exporting, let's go back to this screen here. And we can actually move the, the scale here to 33%. And then let's go ahead and move her down here to the bottom. And then we'll just slide her over to the right here. And now, as you can see, we've got our bottom row already done. It's built out. And now there, our next video clip that we just exported. Here, we'll just copy this one here. We're just going to paste our attributes. Again, we're not going to select the volume. Click Paste. Slide this down just because, I, again, I'm, all I'm looking for is the waveforms. Since we fixed this clip, let's do dual mono here. And let's actually get her into position really quick. So um, let's move her. Actually, since, since uh, we're just going to zero that one out, and then we'll move her to the right. Now already I'm like, I want to be able to maybe isolate the other two. So I'm just going to turn these off right now by hitting V. Just make sure it's lined up at the end. Nice. Okay, I like that. Each choir member is going to either be closer to a microphone or further away. And so hers seems a lot, a lot louder than this other uh, woman here at the bottom. And so what we might end up doing is let's just go ahead and turn this one down quite a bit. All I'm doing is hitting control plus or minus to uh, bring up the levels up or down. And so again, it's just a quick way for me to be able to adjust on the fly. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. We'll just keep layering and keep adding uh, in the next one. So we're gonna go ahead and hit Q to add the next file. So again, we're going to then uh, copy from here, paste. Again, everything but volume. And then this one's the easiest one because it's just right in the middle. So I just need to make this go back to zero, just like that. Foundation, 
Okay. Just gonna pull this one back a little bit. Again, I always like to test the beginning and then kind of go all the way to the end just to make sure that everything lines up with the timing. Okay, so again, I feel like we're getting really close. There might be some fine adjustment we'll continue to do as this goes, but uh, we'll just keep moving on here. So we'll add the next layer. I'm gonna hit Q. Again, just roughly kind of placing these in. Command Shift V. Uncheck my volume. <laughs> Now notice, right, our volume is getting a little bit hot. So we got to watch that just so that we're not exceeding zero. And so um, maybe what we do actually just to rough this in, let me just drop these down a little bit. And all I'm doing is adjusting kind of the, vo the volume down on these. Um, oh, and then when I pasted, we put her in the middle. So let's, um, let's put her back at zero here, but then let's move her this way. And what's interesting is as you start getting HD clips stacked like this, it's just, it's going to start, the computer's going to need some time to process, right? So as I'm try, even trying to move uh, this clip around, it's already starting to like uh, lag a little bit. So on this one, she has like a little bit of headroom. So we're just going to go ahead actually and zoom in on this clip. And then let's, uh, let's crop it actually. Let's do... Okay, let's do the top as well. Okay, that looks better. And then, all right, let's now listen back on this. Perfect. That might have been the easier one to line up, right? Again, just looking at waveforms and how, you know, when they're when they come in. Uh, let's go to all right, so we've gotten two rows done. We're on our final row, uh, which is the top row here. So let's just go ahead and keep going. Q. And let's get him moved into the right position. It's easier for me if I just zero that out and then we'll slide it up. You can tell on his clip. Um, we've got a little bit different uh, framing as well. So we'll fix that here in just a second. All right, so basically all I did is I increased my scale from 33% up to 41 and then we move it in right so that it fits and that looks good we're cutting off some headroom there so everything is fitting nicely so now let's come back here and just make sure that we got our waveforms you can kind of see right like where everyone kind of is hitting they don't need to necessarily hit all like again it's just all in the feel and like how they hit other notes right all right, so he his levels are a lot hotter. So let's um, let's drop him down. Okay, let's see how it ends. This is coming together, right? It's it's so nice. All right, so now let's go back to the beginning here. Let's add the next one. Again, we're going to hit Q, Command Shift V. We're going to hit Paste. Again, we're going to check our audio just to make sure we're, yep, all these are mono, looks like so far, which has been great. 
again sliding this down to roughly where the other ones are and then we can pull this one back a little bit and again if you do want to just isolate one voice uh, you click on the clip do option s and now i can kind of click and drag and listen to where this is hitting at Okay, and now the nice thing about hers is that we just need to go back to zero here and then just raise her straight up. That looks good. Okay. And then let's go ahead and drop her volume down as well. So we can do, so we can start to listen to everybody here. If I hit option S again, it will then clear that. Perfect. All right, I'm liking where these are uh, landing so far. So let's just go ahead and grab that last one. We'll hit Q. And again, paste attributes on that. Uh, we'll hit zero on this. And then we'll actually take this up. Again, we're starting to get the pinwheel, right? Like as, as we keep adding more, of, more voices into the mix. Okay, so that's looking looking pretty good. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hide that. Let's uh, we'll, we'll come back here so we can kind of see all of them. Okay, so now we gotta. He's definitely off, so let's move him. Okay, all right, so let's drastically bring. Bring the bass down. <laughs> okay, so let's see how that sounds. Okay, so here's where we're at. We've got all of our layers stacked up, ready to go. Um, now we're just gonna kind of get into the fine tuning of things. If I play the the music back right now, you can see that my levels are still a little bit hot. So I just want to make sure that as I go through these, I'm just gonna check, you know, roughly like where my where my levels are at to make sure did we adjust everybody's, you know, uh, to the proper volume here. Oh, see, so hers is like negative two. So we might want to drop her volume down actually. Let's highlight. All I'm doing is using the range selection tool. I just highlighted the piano, and let's turn down the piano just a. Uh, just a few dB from where it kind of currently is, just so that we don't compete with the piano, doesn't compete with like the vocals, right? All right, so let's try it. Let's try that. Let's zoom in to see what we're doing. So that seems to be hitting good. I don't know if you can hear that that key the the volume drop on the on the piano here, but okay. So a couple things. One, we need to go through and clean up breath still, and just make sure like where they're going to be starting. So um, if you want them to be pop popping on you know we can we can do that but i think why don't we do this where, where we just have it hard cut in fact let's do we're going to do option left bracket perfect all right so i'm sure you can hear it right it's very breathy 
Um, the other thing that I like to do personally is I just like to uh, affect just the audio. And if I just double click underneath that line, it allows me to do it where I can kind of just come in here and smooth out just kind of how some of these are starting out. Again, our goal is just hearing the piano at the beginning and then when the voices hit to then hear just the voices with the piano. Okay. And then let's go look at the end, like where we're going to end these clips as well. Okay, and now that we know if this is our last frame. then we can select everything else above it and do the same thing. Option bracket, and now we should be able to... So we're getting closer, right? You can hear it. So let's, um, let's just isolate each one now. We'll start from the top and work our way down. And all I'm gonna do here is just clean up breath, okay? It's kind of, uh, this is like the not fun part, I guess, of the process, um, but hopefully you'll see what I'm doing and then you can do the same thing, you know? And actually, I'm going to want to just isolate his by doing the option S. And again, hit, you know, his breath might be a little bit more there. So let's do negative 40. Or negative, let's do negative 33. Sure. He's late for your faith. And again, the goal of this is just to smooth it out, right? Not to make it sound really harsh. In his excellent word. What more can he say than to you? He, 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 And who want to the Savior who you who want to the Savior who Savior Who want to the Savior for for a future Savior for a future flag? All right, so this step is completely optional, right? And so it's you can see it's very time consuming and 
for this example, we only sang one verse of the song. And if you did this with multiple times, uh, you might want to get like a different plugin or something to help reduce the breath, things like that. Um, it, it all just depends on what you're doing. But, you know, for me, by adding the compressor, it just makes the voice sound so much cleaner and better. Um, again, you don't have to do it, but by adding it, you do get that additional breath. So as you can see, as I'm doing this, it's probably taking me, what, uh, double time of what this track is. And if this track is 46 seconds, you know, it's probably taking me a minute and a half to get through each one. And then now we've got this times eight different ones. In fact, we've already done it on one of them. So now we've done two. So anyway, we've got six left to go. So I'm just going to keep doing this, plugging in. I'm going to let you follow along with me on my screen. But um, again, it's kind of a tedious process, but it's you can definitely hear the difference. All right, so we've done it, right? We've finished all taking out all the breaths on all these microphones. And now is, I would say, the final step, which is I actually want to put the text on screen of the lyrics of this song. And so you might want to do that same thing. And I'm going to show you how I would go about doing it right now. And so let's dive into this. So next, I'm going to click on the Titles and Generator tab. And from here, I actually have under my generators, under solid, I'm just going to do a solid color. I'm going to stretch this out to just cover the duration of time that we've got with, with these singers. And now from here, I'm just going to crop the top. So I'll just grab the top here and just pull it down. Okay, so let's try that. And then under opacity, uh, let's just type in 90, just so that we can see a little bit behind. Again, it's up to you. Uh, I, I like doing the bar across the bottom myself, but again, it's completely up to you how you want to do it. Um, again, I just want to make sure that this is hitting right where I want it to. All right, so here's what I did. I ended up taking a poll of, you know, what is the best font that churches are using right now uh, for doing lower thirds and for doing uh, song lyrics. And so one of the ones that they uh, that I saw that was on the, the, the very top ranked one was the CMG Sans font. And so that's what I've got in here. And I'm going to show you that right now. Um, if I come up here to title, I'm just going to do a, if I click on titles, I'm just going to do a basic title. I'm just going to click and drag that down into the timeline here. So now that our title is actually in the center of the screen, we're going to fix this in a little bit. But just for now, um, I actually have in my notes, I already copied the lyrics. And so I'm going to copy this. I'm just going to keep coming back and forth on this where I'm just going to, you know, paste inside of here. Okay, great. And then... And I'm zoomed in quite a bit, so I'll pull back a little bit. Okay. Again, the whole goal of this was just to, to be able to, to speed up, right, by just being able to copy and paste everything in. And again, just noticing like where punctuation was on the last one, I'm going to have to break up some of these words just so they fit on screen.
All right, so the only thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to fade out of the text at the very end. So I'm just going to put a cross dissolve on that so it'll fade out. Um, now I'm just going to come back here to the very first one. And now I'm actually going to move this down to where it's on the actual black bar that we created earlier. So that looks good. Okay, and now if we come into here, I'm actually going to select all of these. And we're going to go back up to there it is, CMG Sans. I'm going to select that. I like it that it's bold. I'm actually going to make the font size, let's just increase this so that people can read it better. Uh, let's try 80. I think that looks good. And now it's just a matter of placing it in between the black bar, which I think that also looks great. Um, so now all the fonts should have gotten updated. The only thing is, now that we've positioned the one, we can actually copy it, select the others, paste attributes on position, and just like that we've got all of our fonts and they look good. That is a great looking font. Anyway, so for everyone that uh, to, that voted on that, good job, because uh, I think it looks fantastic. Um, so there it is. So now, I think that's it, you guys. Like, how do how do you think this looks so far? Let's uh, let's hit home here, and let's hit play, and just see if there's anything that we that we missed. Yeah. 
So I liked where the levels were hitting. I liked how everything came together and it sounded. I liked that we got our lyrics on the screen. Everything looks good. Um, the only thing that I noticed is that we can fix right now. I did notice that some of these are not necessarily like coming in at the same time. So I think on this one instead, I think what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to come to the first frame here and I'm going to add a freeze frame. Okay, we'll do the same thing with the bottom one. And again, all I'm doing is creating a still image, right? That's gonna hold for a frame or two, just to kind of uh, hold the duration of time, just so it doesn't, all of them don't just come populating on. Let's see how they end, because I think we'll do the same thing on the end. Okay, so now we have it start. Where they're all at the beginning, and then when they end. I must have looping on, but anyway. So it should have the very last frame. Oh, looks like we missed one. Just barely. Perfect, okay. Now we've got everyone ending at the same time, everyone begins at the same time, we've got lyrics added, we've got our level set, everything's ready to go. So now let's go ahead and export this file out and then I'll play you the final so that you can see it all the way through. And that's it, you guys. I'm super excited for this video because, again, this was something that I saw on Jimmy Fallon. It's something that I've seen over and over. Even when you do a Zoom call, you can have all these people up. But now here's a way that you can have high-quality video because if people pull out their phones, it's going to look better than a webcam. Um, their ability to then be able to send you a song, right, and then you can then take that, add it inside of here, and then you can just apply some presets, make it sound good, put your music down, and then you've got your choir singing to the music. Now, the other interesting thing is I could actually take the piano out, you know? Um, I don't have to have the piano in there, and then that would sound good too, right? So... Again, it just depends on like what you want to do uh, inside of your church, but I hope that this helps uh, shed some light on how you might be able to do this and how you can incorporate some of this into, uh, into, into all of this. And what else is nice is if you were to do this throughout the week, um, you can actually take this right as a, as a video and you can cut it into your live broadcast uh, that you're doing probably every Sunday right now. And so... I, again, I just thought that this was a great way with social distancing and, and everything and people aren't able to get together uh, and be united as a church. This is a great way where we can still bring the choir to the people and they can actually see and hear. And that's uh, to me, this is such a key uh, piece to what you're able to do for your churches. So I hope that this has been helpful. And until next time. Oh, uh -huh.